President Biden is visiting North Carolina today. He's expected to announce millions of dollars coming to the state to connect thousands of homes and businesses to high speed Internet. Our Maria DeBone joins us live from Raleigh this afternoon. And Maria, how much new funding are we talking here? We begin with breaking news first here at four. A tragic update in the search for a missing submarine. And we begin with breaking news first here at noon. But first here at four, we are hearing from the father of a boy who went missing 20 years ago. We are getting our first look at how leaders in Alamance Burlington schools plan to keep mold out of buildings long term. We are continuing now to follow today's breaking news from Winston-Salem after reports of an active shooter this morning at Forsyth Tech. All right, we are bringing you breaking news from Forsyth Tech right now. The school saying law enforcement is responding to an active shooter situation on campus. We're following breaking news right now out of Graham, where crews are still on the scene of a massive fire at the former Culp Weaving Textile Mill. Burlington police are investigating after a man was shot multiple times. Officers say they found the victim on Peace Lane Saturday night around 830. First at five, it's a WXII 12 first warning weather impact day, and we're watching the possibility of storms across the triad this evening. First here at 10, the Stokesdale man accused of making death threats against FBI agents was in federal court today in Winston-Salem. Alec Murdoch is taking the stand in his own defense in his double murder trial. He is charged with killing his wife and his son, who were found dead on the family's property in June of 2021. The holidays are right around the corner, and as we just mentioned, there's about 60% more people utilizing the food bank this year than at this same time last year, and that's a dramatic increase. The community manager for Yelp and the triad joined us this morning on the local vibe to share how you can participate. The Panthers introduced new head coach Frank Reich to the media today, or maybe reintroduced is the better way of putting it. After months of hard work, eight teams are now fighting for the title, among them Wake Forest University. Well, you know, we're definitely looking forward to it. I don't know if many people are looking forward to it here in the <laughs> triad because we're going to get majority of ice, it sounds yeah, like. Like a mix, Michelle. Winston-Salem fire officials are investigating getting the cause of a house fire that took place on Christmas Day. A visual is now planned this weekend to remember a woman killed in a crash in Winston-Salem. Nikki Haley has been seeing a recent surge in polls, but today she's coming under fire for how she answered a question about the cause of the Civil War. And tonight in 12 Investigates, we have learned the gas station where an off-duty Greensboro police sergeant was shot and killed last weekend had multiple thefts and larcenies in 2023. Happening now in Ashboro, utility crews are working to fix a water main break. That would be me. <laughs> I, I would could be see doing you that. doing that, Dylan. <laughs> Although you're probably not going to have a chance to here in Winston because we're not going to have snow quite like that. No, nothing like that, <laughs> Lindsay. And Gypsy Rose Blanchard, the Missouri woman who plotted to kill her mother in a case that sparked a frenzy and even inspired a TV series, is now out of prison. My birthday's this weekend, Dave, and you are not giving me a great gift with the uh -oh. weather. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we won't ask the obvious question, but <laughs> younger than the degree we see Saturday. Ooh, that's low. <laughs> I think you're cheating on some numbers there, Lindsay. The SBI is now investigating after a Wake County man died while in law enforcement custody in Elkin last week. The Wake Forest baseball team is now in Omaha for the College World Series. The last time Wake Forest made it there was in 1955 and they won. Grief and outrage in Central Florida and across the country this morning as authorities search for a motive behind a series of shootings in the Orlando area. We just got a generous donation from Debbie here. And Debbie, I was asking you, what brought you out here today? What made you decide to come donate? Lainey, I'm a fan of celebrating ice cream. <laughs> oh, There's yeah. a day for everything, but ice cream's one I can get behind. No sign of Ted Budd here yet, but we have seen members of his campaign around the area. He will be here tonight watching those numbers roll in in this very important and closely monitored race for North Carolina's U.S. Senate seat. Comic-Con opens today in San Diego with more than 130,000 people expected to attend. This happened around 3.30 this afternoon, and police say it appears the vehicle accidentally crashed into the building. Thankfully, no one was injured. And we really appreciate everyone coming by, saying hello, doing some shopping inside the Lowe's Foods, and then dropping off some donations. We actually have a donation. It looks like coming up right here. According to the Greensboro Police Department, per standard protocol, the officer involved was placed on administrative leave. The Triad Diving Academy is getting ready to compete at nationals in just a few weeks. In Winston-Salem, a vigil to remember a recent victim of violence ended with shots being fired. And we did actually reach out to the 
the Winston-Salem Police Department to try to get in touch with those officers, but they were unfortunately off today, so we hope to speak with them about this encounter in the near future. NBC's Alice Barr reports from the White House as the country's leaders attempt to find a compromise. According to investigators, it appears the driver of the car continued past the bus. The driver has not been charged yet, but Highway Patrol is talking with the Guilford County District Attorney's Office, and they say felony charges are likely. So a whole year went by before they started actually conducting the homicide investigation. Chief Penn had mentioned that Woods was actually working on that property at the time of his disappearance, which is why they've been focusing on that area. Our Maria DeBone joins us live now. And Maria, before they took off this morning, dozens of fans gathered at the stadium parking lot to cheer them on. There's a lot of excitement, obviously, for good reason. A shortage of life-saving asthma medication appears to be getting worse around the country. Weapons made privately and not given a serial number have become a big issue for law enforcement, including here in North Carolina. Well, many families across the triad are continuing to struggle as the high inflation rate impacts prices for food, shelter, and medical care. Our Joshua Davis got a chance to speak with firefighters who responded to the scene. He joins us now with the story. And there's yeah. a reason you're excited about this I was this just next so one. excited to yeah. talk about Taylor. Understandable. Yeah. I'm happiest when we, we talk about her. Take but the, it away. The talk of the NFL this past weekend had nothing to do with football at all because it was all eyes on Taylor. Very nice. It is time to trick or treat. Save me a Reese's cup, will you? I will. And okay. some M&Ms too. Appreciate it. That's going to do it for the news at noon. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you back here today starting at four o'clock. Happening now, thousands of students at North Carolina A&T State University are spending a second day out of the residence hall and in the cold weather. That's because heating systems are damaged there and the university says repairs can't be made before the weekend. Our star Connor joins us live from the campus this afternoon and star. What have you learned this morning? Top of mind is the weather. Cold weather has Winston Salem dealing with water main breaks all over the place. And this is video of one on Stratford Road near Forest Drive. That's one of several breaks within the last 24 hours we've been dealing with. The city says repairs can take a while as crews cannot dig until they know where all the other lines in the city are like telephone and gas lines. And talking about the weather this afternoon, we're going to take a live look outside from our cam at High Point University where it is another cold afternoon. We have <laughs> meteorologist Dylan Hudler joining us now. So Dylan, how's the rest of the day looking? Are we going to warm up at all? Oh, we are going to warm up. Uh, it's a heat wave out there. We've made it into the low 40s. How about wow. that? Wow, you know, after that. the last few days, that seems you know, nice. <laughs> I know it is nice, comfortable. You might even want to yeah. throw on some shorts and a t-shirt, right? Oh, whoa, calm down. A cold weekend ahead for sure. Dylan, thank you. President Biden is visiting North Carolina today. He's expected to announce millions of dollars coming to the state to connect thousands of homes and businesses to high speed Internet. Our Maria DeBone joins us live from Raleigh this afternoon. And Maria, how much new funding are we talking here? All right, Maria, thank you. And ahead of the president's visit, North Carolina Republicans are hammering his record on the economy. Senate leader Phil Berger of Rockingham County issued a statement that reads, quote, from shutting down energy independence to making trips to the grocery store unaffordable, the incoherence coming from the Oval Office has resulted in higher costs for families and businesses. You think with all the time the Biden administration has spent in North Carolina, it would learn a thing or two about real economic success. That's sadly not the case, end quote. New here at noon, a man has been sentenced in a burglary and sexual assault on the campus of High Point University. The Guilford County Clerk of Superior Court says Philippe Said was sentenced January 8th to between 15 and 23 years for attempted first degree rape. A judge dropped a charge of assault on a female. Prosecutors say these crimes took place back in December of 2021 and the suspect had several outstanding warrants when he was taken into custody. Also new at noon, state troopers are investigating a deadly crash in Wilkes County. We're told this is happening on Conley Shoemaker Road near Champion Mount Pleasant Road. Highway Patrol tells us two cars are involved and investigators are still on the scene right now. The four suspects charged in connection to a fraud investigation at the Forsyth County Detention Center appeared in court today. A district court judge read the counts against former detention officers 
Alfred Scott Jr. and Laura Davis, as well as food service contract worker Donetta Jones and inmate Christopher McRae. They are accused of stealing the identities of more than a dozen inmates at the jail. Sheriff Bobby Kimbrough says this is the result of a four month long investigation. It started after a security system alert pinged a fraud scheme at the detention center last year. So far, we are told the identities of 18 inmates have been compromised. To betray not just me, but to betray and put the men and women that serve and protect with them every day uh, is frustrating to me, it's aggravating. Um, very aggravating. And we did reach out to Airmark regarding the food service employee that was arrested and the company told us, quote, we are aware of this situation and the person involved is no longer with our organization. A new DOJ report is shedding light on the Uvalde school massacre that says it could have been stopped sooner. That 2022 attack at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, left 19 students and two teachers dead. According to the Justice Department, responding officers demonstrated no urgency in setting up a command post and failed to treat what was happening as an active shooter situation. The father of one of the youngest victims, a nine year old, says his loss is still as fresh for him as the day it happened. You don't ever get get over a loss like this. I mean. never, especially this type of loss. It's, it's unbearable. Mm -hmm. You know, people tend to say get over it, go on. How can you as your child? The DOJ is calling it, quote, cascading failures and law enforcement's handling of one of the deadliest mass shootings in America. They point to an array of problems from failed communication to inadequate training. In Washington right now, parts of the federal government are set to shut down when tomorrow ends. The difference this time is that negotiations aren't just focused on the U.S. budget spending. Tomorrow is the last day of funding for segments of the federal government. That is unless lawmakers can prevent a partial government shutdown. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says his chamber should be able to pass a stopgap measure today, which could create a new funding deadline of March 1st and 8th. You cannot cannot do things with one party in a divided Congress. In spite of what people are saying on both sides, this is a better agreement than we had. The trouble is creating a plan both Senate Democrats and House Republicans can support by tomorrow night. Congress met with President Joe Biden yesterday discussing matters like funding for Ukraine. Happening now, the city of High Point is holding a public services hiring event that's going on until three o'clock at the public library on North Main Street. We're told there are openings for motor and sanitation equipment operators, water sewer technicians and other positions as well. Qualified applicants could receive a next day offer. A teacher in the Piedmont Triad is in the running to become North Carolina Teacher of the Year. Will Mars is a drafting teacher at Davie County High School. He began his career in education six years ago via a residency license, bringing real world experience to the classroom. He is one of nine finalists from across North Carolina for the Teacher of the Year Award. The Department of Public Instruction will present the award on April 5th at a banquet in Cary. School bus chaos in a North Carolina school district, the issue causing dozens of drivers to miss work and how officials are addressing their concerns. Plus, two members of Britain's royal family dealing with health issues right now, why the comments from the palace are almost unheard of. And we start with weather first here at noon, a live look over downtown Graham right now. The sun is trying to come out today after a few days of rain. Meteorologist Dave Aiken is here and Dave, how does the rest of the day look? All right, Dave, thank you. High Point nabbed six people in an operation to reduce crime across the city. We're told the operation took place between December 19th and 22nd and involved several different units in the department. In addition to the arrests, officers seized four firearms, more than 1,000 grams of meth, along with heroin and marijuana. Police also confiscated more than $1,100 in cash. We now know a house fire on Christmas night killed one person. We're hearing from the 10 year old boy who is the one who called 911 as flames shot through the roof of the home in his grandmother's neighborhood. 10 year old Amir Leslie says he and his brother saw the flames while they were at the dinner table at his grandmother's house on Brookway Drive. We have video from the scene on Christmas Day around 845 PM. And as you see, the house was completely engulfed in flames with embers filling the air. The boys sprang into action, hoping no other 
other homes in the neighborhood caught fire. My two brothers, they went to the house and they tried to, they kicked the door in. And then the sparks on the power lines, they started, um, whatever, sparking. sparking. And then my dad told them to fall back. The Winston-Salem Fire Department says the deadly fire started in the kitchen. Authorities have not released the name of the person killed. Elon University says a women's basketball player injured in a car crash is now out of the ICU. The family of forward Ava LaRue shared the update with the team and says she's making, quote, amazing progress. The university also tells us the wreck took place while she was home in Pennsylvania for holiday break. The women's basketball team is scheduled to return to the court for the first time since that accident in a game against HPU Saturday. Starting January 1st, a new clear bag policy for all athletic events will go into effect in Surrey County Schools. Only clear bags that are no larger than 12 by 6 by 12 inches and small clutch purses will be allowed at games and matches. Non clear bag packs, large purses, duffel bags and diaper bags will all be banned. Athletes, coaches and officials participating in athletic events are exempt from this rule. The school board approved that policy last month. To the Middle East now, Israeli forces are attacking towns and refugee camps across Gaza. It comes as ground offenses against Hamas militants force thousands more to leave their homes. As Josh Letterman reports, Israel is now being attacked from Lebanon's southern border. Nikki Haley has been seeing a recent surge in polls, but today she's coming under fire for how she answered a question about the cause of the civil war. Ryan Nobles shows us the controversial response. And Nikki Haley's campaign is not responding to requests for a comment. She is expected to appear in New Hampshire throughout the day. The Colorado Republican Party is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn the decision to remove Donald Trump from the state's 2024 ballot. The former president has not yet filed his appeal, but it's expected to come soon. The appeal means the state court's pause on the ruling set to expire January 4th will now be extended until the U.S. Supreme Court announces whether it will take up the appeal. If it does, it will be extended until it issues a final decision on the issue. Just before the primary election, many Republicans say they doubt whether their votes will be counted correctly. A new poll from the Associated Press asked more than 1,000 U.S. adults about their confidence levels and their political parties. About a third of Republicans have a great deal or quite a bit of confidence that their votes in the primaries will be counted correctly. Another third have a moderate amount of confidence, and a third also say they have little confidence or none at all. On the other side of the aisle, 72 percent of Democrats say they think their party will count votes correctly in the primary election. Today, NC State and Kansas State will kick off in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. The Wolf Pack takes a 9-3 record into today's game. They have a chance to finish the season with at least 10 wins for only the second time in program history. NC State will be integrating several new players into the starting lineup due to some absences. Kickoff is at 5.45 p.m. at Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida. WXII 12 Sports Director John Johnson is in Orlando for the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Look for his reports on the game later today on WXII 12 News starting at 4. A civil rights activist kicked out of a North Carolina movie theater. How the company's CEO is now responding. Plus, demolition day. Crews begin tearing down the house in Idaho where four college students were murdered last year. Why this move is giving families of the victims some mixed reactions and feelings. And later, big changes for those with asthma. Why pharmacies are replacing one particular inhaler for a generic brand that may not be covered by insurance.